Hi and welcome back to the channel. We were in the midst of discussing the anatomy of orbit and its contents. In my last video, we discussed the features of bony orbit and extraocular muscles. In this video, we will see the nerves and vessels of orbit. Before moving on to today's topic, I strongly suggest you watch my previous video if you had not done that already because so many things I will be taking for granted as already known to you in this video has been already discussed in that previous video. The link for that video is now in your screen and it is also in the description. Okay, now that you have seen that video, let's move in to today's topic. Coming to the nerves and vessels of orbit, in vessels, we have the ophthalmic artery, the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins and some lymphatics. In nerves, we have the second or optic nerve, third or oculomotor nerve, fourth trochlear nerve, sixth abducens nerve and branches of first and second division of the trigeminal nerve. Before talking more about these structures as such, I think it would be better if you see what are the structures that pass through the superior orbital fissure into the orbit and their interrelationship within the superior orbital fissure. This will put things in a perspective. We had touched this point a bit in my last video. We will complete that now. This will help you in tackling questions of superior orbital fissure also, which is also another important topic. So, as we already saw in our last video, superior orbital fissure is divided into a lateral, medial and medial part by the ring of zin. The lateral part here transmits the lacrimal, frontal, trochlear nerves and superior ophthalmic vein LFTS, lacrimal, frontal, trochlear nerves and superior ophthalmic vein. The middle part transmits the upper and lower divisions of oculomotor nerve. The nasociliary nerve lies in between these two divisions and abducens nerve lies inferolateral to all these. Remember, it is better to keep this relationship in mind. It will help you in reproducing the diagrams. The medial part transmits the inferior ophthalmic vein and some sympathetic nerves from plexus around the internal carotid artery. Of these, we did see some structures. To be more specific, the nerves which supply the extraocular muscles in more detail in our last video itself. I will brush that up real quick and move on to the other structures. The trochlear nerve enters through the lateral part and supplies the superior oblique muscle. The upper and lower division of oculomotor nerve enters through the middle part. Of these, the upper division supplies the superior rectus and levator palpebrae superioris and the lower division supplies the medial rectus, the inferior rectus and inferior oblique. The abducens, as I told you, enters through the middle part lying inferolateral to the two divisions of the oculomotor nerve and it supplies the lateral rectus. Okay, now let's add the other nerves entering the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. These are in effect none other than the three branches of the first division of trigeminal nerve. That is the lacrimal, frontal and nasociliary nerves. The first one we will see here which passes through the lateral part of superior orbital fissure is the lacrimal nerve. This is the smallest of the three terminal branches of ophthalmic nerve. It runs along the upper border of lateral rectus. Here it receives a communication from zygomatic branch of maxillary nerve. Then it passes deep to lacrimal gland and ends by supplying the lacrimal gland, the conjunctiva and upper eyelid. Here remember its own fibers to the lacrimal gland are just sensory. The secretomotor fibers to the gland come from the greater petrocell nerve through the communication which this nerve receives from the zygomatic nerve. Moving on to the next nerve, that is the frontal nerve. This is the largest of the three terminal branches of ophthalmic nerve. This also enters the orbit through the lateral part of superior orbital fissure. It runs forwards on the surface of levator palpebrae superioris. At about the middle of the orbit, 
it divides into a small supratrochlear branch and a large supraorbital branch. Of this, the supratrochlear nerve emerges from the orbit just above the trochlea for the superior oblique muscle. It supplies the conjunctiva, the upper eyelid and a small area of the skin or forehead just above the root of the nose. The supraorbital nerve emerges from the orbit through the supraorbital notch of foramen and then runs upwards over the forehead and scalp. Apart from the skin of forehead and scalp, it also supplies the conjunctiva, the central part of the upper eyelid and frontal air sinus. Coming to the last of the three terminal branches of the ophthalmic nerve, that is the nasociliary nerve, this one enters the orbit through the middle part of the superior orbital fissure where it lies between the two divisions of the oculomotor nerve. Then it crosses from the lateral to the medial side above the optic nerve and then runs along the medial wall of the orbit. Here it lies between the superior oblique muscle above and medial rectus below. It ends at the anterior ethmoidal foramen by dividing into infratrochlea and anterior ethmoidal nerves. Its branches include the communicating branch to the ciliary ganglion, two or three long ciliary nerves, posterior ethmoidal nerve, infratrochlear nerve and anterior ethmoidal nerve. I have not shown them here to avoid clutter. Moving on to other nerves which enter the orbit that is uh, the branches of second or maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. The first one we will see here is infraorbital nerve. It is in fact a continuation of maxillary nerve. It enters the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. Then it runs along the floor of the orbit first in the infraorbital groove and then in the infraorbital canal. And finally, it emerges from the infraorbital foramen and terminates by dividing into three terminal branches that is the palpebral, nasal and labial branches. Apart from the three terminal branches, the other branches of this nerve are middle superior alveolar nerve and anterior superior alveolar nerve. I have discussed in detail this nerve and for that matter the entire maxillary nerve and its branches in another video in the channel. The link for that video is now available on the screen and is also given in the description. You can watch that video for more on these nerves. Now coming to another nerve which we see in orbit which is also a branch of maxillary nerve that is the zygomatic nerve. It also enters the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. Then it runs along the lateral wall of the orbit. As we saw already here it gives a communicating branch to the lacrimal nerve which carries the secretomotor fibers for the lacrimal gland. Then it enters the zygomatic bone there it divides into two terminal branches that is the zygomaticofacial and zygomaticotemporal branches. You can find more on this nerve also in the video I mentioned earlier. Apart from this the orbit also contains a few sympathetic nerves which we will not go into uh, in further detail. We will wind up our nerve section here and move on to the arteries of the orbit. The major artery which supplies the structures in orbit is the ophthalmic artery. The ophthalmic artery takes its origin as a branch of cerebral part of internal carotid artery which is given off medial to the anterior clenoid process. It enters the orbit through the optic canal lying infrolateral to the optic nerve. In the orbit it crosses that nerve that is the optic nerve above from lateral to medial side and then runs forwards along the medial wall of the orbit. There it lies between the superior oblique muscle above and medial rectus muscle below running parallel to the nasociliary nerve which we saw earlier. Finally it terminates near the medial angle of the eye by dividing into supratrochlea and dorsal nasal branches. Coming to the branches of ophthalmic artery, the first major branch is the central artery of retina. This artery enters the substance of optic nerve and runs through the substance of optic nerve. This artery supplies the retina and it is an end artery. What is an end artery? We will discuss that shortly while discussing the clinical relevance part. 
Moving on to the next branch, which is a major branch, that is the lacrimal artery. Lacrimal artery runs along the lateral wall of the orbit. There, it gives off the muscular branches for the muscles of orbit to zygomatic branches, zygomatico facial and zygomatico temporal, lateral palpebral branches for the eyelid, and finally, it ends by supplying the lacrimal gland. Near its origin, it also gives off a recurrent meningeal branch which re-enters the cranial fossa through superior orbital fissure and supplies the middle cranial fossa. Moving on to the other branches which are given off from the main trunk which runs along the medial wall. The main trunk gives off the posterior long and short ciliary arteries which supply the choroid and iris. The supraorbital branch supplies the skin of the forehead. The anterior and posterior ethmoidal branches pass through the anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramen respectively and supply the ethmoidal sinus, part of the nose and anterior cranial fossa. The medial palpebral branch supplies the eyelid and of the two terminal branches that is the supratrochlear and dorsal nasal, the supratrochlear supplies the skin of the forehead and dorsal nasal supplies the upper part of the nose. Now moving on to the clinical anatomy which is relevant to the ophthalmic artery. As we already saw, central artery of retina is an end artery. An end artery is a terminal artery which do not anastomose with any of its neighbors and uh, the, it does not have any collateral circulation and it is the only artery which supplies that part of the tissue. So end artery is an artery which has no anastomosis no collateral circulation and it is the terminal artery and the only artery which supplies that part of the tissue. Our central artery of retina which supplies the retina is an end artery and hence any blockage of this artery leads to sudden blindness because most of the retina is supplied by only this artery. That's all for clinical relevance. Coming to other vessels which are seen in the orbit. There are the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins and some lymphatics. We will not go into them and I think we can wind up this topic here. But before winding up today's session, I think we will have to see one more thing. I will show you the structures as we see after removing the roof of the orbit in order. Probably during dissection, we will be removing the roof of the orbit to study the structures present within the orbit. So it will be very useful for you to know what are the structures we encounter as we remove the roof of the orbit during a dissection session. As we remove the roof of the orbit, the first structure which you may come across may be the frontal nerve which runs over the surface of the levator palpebrae superioris. Superior rectus will be found beneath the levator palpebrae superioris and superior oblique muscle can be found medially. Deep to these, other structures can be found. Well, I think we will wind up our session today here. In my next video, probably we will talk about the lacrimal gland and ciliary ganglion. Until I meet you in another video, thanks for watching. Bye.